So I want to preface this with saying that it's not necessarily ruined music. It's music that the meaning behind it has drastically changed for me. And there's two songs that I came with in mind today um, and specifically very topical. Um, yesterday was the eighth anniversary of a very good friend of mine passing away, a friend named Pope, John Paul Allison. And um, Pope was a really special individual, uh, one of a kind person. And he was our lighting director for a number of years and uh, passed away when he was 26 years old. And before we would play shows, Pope would always, we, we'd have like a, the hour before playing show, before going on stage where we'd all have to get together and listen to music and just kind of, you know, be in each other's presence. And he would always play Motley Crue's Shout at the Devil. And I am not a fan of Motley Crue at all. Um, but that song will forever have a special place in my heart. And I think that the way that any other person feels when they hear Shout at the Devil is completely different to the way that I feel when I hear Shout at the Devil. Um, Pope is buried in Oklahoma, and anytime we're there, I go to his grave and I bring a joint, and I'll sit there and I'll listen to Shout at the Devil and smoke a joint with Pope. I'm not a Marilyn Manson fan. I could really care less about Marilyn Manson. Uh, at Pope's funeral, though, uh, in, the, in the room where the viewing was, his casket was set out, and uh, as I said, Pope was an LD, so his friends arranged a light show to happen around his casket, and as the light show was happening, they blasted Marilyn Manson's The Beautiful People at stun volume to everyone who was there for the funeral. So it was a room full of people bawling their eyes out while their friend was, was there in front of them for the last time, listening to Marilyn Manson sing The Beautiful People. And I, you know, when I, whenever I hear Marilyn Manson's The Beautiful People, it affects me in, in, in that way. And I remember, uh, I remember my friend. There's a couple Against Me songs that have been ruined over the years for me. There's one song in particular called Burn, or it's called Burn by fans. It never had a name, but it says Burn multiple times in the chorus. It was like kind of an afterthought of a song that was put on a record, not even listed in the track listing, um, like a hidden track, if you will, back in the day when people listened to CDs. Uh, and we put it on there because we recorded it, but if you listen to it, I never actually finished the lyrics to the second verse. It's just unintelligible mumbling. It always annoyed me as a song being like, ah, oh, I didn't ever finish that song. And then the fact that people really gravitated towards that song and really liked that song annoyed me more because it was like, what are you, why do you like it? <laughs> like, it's not literally saying nothing, you know? There, there's phases with songs though, where like I get really burnt out on them. The song Don't Lose Touch, I was really burnt out on for a long time. I'm still kind of burnt out on it a little bit. But um, I think for the most part though, if it brings joy to someone else, I can, I can stomach what, the way I'm feeling about it, at least in the live context and still play it. Okay, so I'll, I'll riff on this. No one's ever specifically come up and said, hey, this song of yours is totally ruined for me. But on a related note, I have a real aversion to people getting engaged at our shows. I really don't like it when people get engaged at our shows because whenever it happens, I think, fuck, we've just lost two fans. Because I think statistically their their marriage is going to end in divorce and then for both of them, our band will be an unhappy memory for them. A lot of people will ask if they can do it on stage and I always say no. But, you know, sometimes people will come up and be like, we got engaged and it's just, you know, out in the audience or something like that. Um, and I'm every time I think, God damn it, <laughs> fucking like, you're working against me here. You're making my job harder. <laughs> I've never had anybody come up and be like, hey, I got divorced. <laughs> or we got it, I got engaged at your show and then I got a divorce and I'm still here. But that's the point, is that no one comes up and says that. They're just no longer fans because it's a painful memory for them. So they don't want to go to the show anymore. You know, they don't want to listen to your band because it makes them think about when they got engaged to whatever asshole and then got a divorce. B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A coming for the, sorry, that's what we're singing, right? <laughs> more money we talk about, the more problems we see. <laughs> Federal agents mad cause I'm flagrant, tap myself in the phone in the basement. <laughs> <So>. <laughs>